Honorable Yusuf Buba Yakubu is a member of the Federal House of Representatives representing Hans Chogombe Federal Constituency of Adamawa State under the platform of All Progressive Congress APC. Honorable Yusuf was born in 1968. He attended government secondary school Meha after his education and prior to being elected into the Federal House of Representatives, he founded and became the chairman stroke managing director of Yubu Ventures Nigeria Limited, a company whose objective is commercial farming and real estate development. Check out his journey into politics on the gallery. Hello Nigeria, I welcome you to another exciting edition of your program, The Gallery. My name is Mercy, and today on our wonderful program, we have a wonderful man, a man who has done a lot to touch the life of the society that I've given him so much. And I won't do much of his uh, introduction, but he's not other person than Honorable Yusuf Boba Yakubo. It's so nice having you on the gallery. So how are you doing? Okay. Are you sure? <laughs> Tell us more about being a businessman, being a politician, and also a farmer. Most especially the, the farmer aspect of it. Well, I've been in politics uh since I was 20 years old, and uh, that was during the SDP days. Okay. I started as a local government treasurer right, of the SDP, and then uh, during the non-party uh, days, during the general Abacha political experiment, okay. uh, I uh, contested as a local government chairman, and then after that, you know, we transformed into uh, five political parties. I was in the UNCP, I was a state uh, organizing secretary of the, the UNCP. And uh, after that, uh, we transformed uh, to the PDP, AMPP. Okay. I was also a state officer uh, in the APP uh, before the AMPP. And uh, during the uh, PDP days. I was in PDP briefly during the 1999 uh, elections. I uh, served on the accreditation uh, committee of the Just Convention. I was also one of the agents for the presidential elections for President Obasanjo. And uh, you know, after that, uh, we formed the ACD. I was the founding national treasurer of the ACD and later I was a national chairman of ACD for six years before I contested election in the APC and to come to the House of Representatives. And on the other side, that is the farming side, I started farming from the grassroots. But I was not born in the village. But uh, I just chose, I love agri, I love farming. And I went to my grandfather in the village and started practicing farming. Now I grew up in that line too, and uh, I have gone into commercial agriculture. Okay. Now, so let's talk more about uh, as a chairman committee on um, Chinese uh, religion. Now tell me, how has it been? You putting or bringing the Chinese together to do some investment, has in that position, what have you been doing to help the society? You know, Nigeria, China has a lot of things in common. And uh, when you talk of population, uh, China is the most populated country in the world, with over one million population. And Nigeria is uh, the sixth most populated country in the world, with uh, about 180 million population. And our China has gone through what we are going through right now. In the 60s, 70s, our GDP was uh, far, far better than China. But uh, today, within a period of 40 years, China has transformed uh, to become 
uh, if not the greatest nation, one of the greatest nations in the world. And uh, so Nigeria, we have a lot to learn uh, from China. First, they conquered hunger, that is uh, the agricultural sector. After that, they went into industrialization. And today, they are fully, fully industrialized and uh, they want to go out uh, to other nations to put in those industries. So what we are encouraging is, uh, instead of importing uh, things from China, because you know almost in every house in Nigeria you have a Chinese product, we want to encourage them to come in and partner with our businessmen and put in these industries in Nigeria uh, so that uh, we will create jobs for our people. We know we have uh, millions of unemployed uh, youths and women in this country. So we want them to come in and partner with us so that we can produce made in Nigeria good, if we like we call it made in Nigeria with China. And so that is uh, where we are with them. Now, sir, with what is happening in the country, the, the Nigerian people have lost confidence in this present government. As one of the uh, party members and uh, honorable members as well, what do you have to say? What is your take on this? Well, I don't want to believe Nigerians have lost confidence in the, in the government. And uh, I also want uh, people to know that, you know, it is always very easy to destroy than to build. This country has been bastardized for so many years now. And this government is trying to rebuild. In fact, we don't even have a foundation right now. So what this government is trying to do is to set the foundation, to have a solid foundation, build on transparency, build on rule of law, where uh, the government institutions will be strengthened to function very well, uh, not depending on any individual, where corruption will be a thing of the past. And you know with corruption, there is no way we can move forward. So everything was bastardized. So the Buhari administration uh, started with the fight against the corruption. And then we also met uh, insecurity. With insecurity, there is nothing you can do. You can't rebuild a nation that is in war. So we thank God, a lot of uh, successes have been achieved. The, the insecurity issues are piping down. And uh, in terms of corruption, at least people are now conscious mm -hmm. of uh, the dangers of uh, corruption. So uh, we are making a lot of progress. And I assure you that uh, if we continue in this line, in the next uh, few years, Nigeria will come back to its feet again. That's wonderful. Now, sir, how can you describe Adamara state of years back and this present here that we are? How can you describe it? Uh, well, um, Adamara state is growing. And uh, we have uh, witnessed a lot of uh, changes. Uh, for instance, uh, this uh, crop of uh, people in government are really doing their best. Uh, at the state level, uh, there is a lot of transformation because uh, in the past, if you go to the Adama state capital that is Yola, uh, you will think it is a state that it is in war because all the roads, networks are not there. But today, uh, you go to Yola, it's a beautiful city with uh, all the uh, road network uh, beautifully laid and uh, the city is lighted up. Mm -hmm. And when you go down to the grassroots, the members of the National Assembly uh, from Adam Master, the crop of members we have, they are really doing their best because they have concentrated on uh, poverty alleviation, entrepreneurial development, and uh, job creation for the youth. And that is what we really need. So we are all working together as a group and, uh, and as a party. Some are doing the roads and some are creating the jobs. <laughs> while some are giving uh, food to the, to the media. <laughs> That's nice. Well, I actually laugh. He's trying to wait because you know I'm going to come back to that. Yeah. What is your relationship with your people in your constituency? Because with what I've seen so far, really, I just need to ask you. So it won't really look as if I'm voicing it out myself. What are your relationship with your people? Why is it that they love you so much? 
they celebrate you, they want to be around you. What is it that you're doing for them that is making them to fall thus uh, madly in love with your person? Well, you know, as I said earlier, I'm a grassroots politician. I grew up together with them and uh, I have gone through the trenches of the uh, democratic experience in the country. As I have told you, I started from the grassroots and grew all the way. Yeah. And I have been in uh, political party management. So I know we are, what, uh, what, uh, what is the problem of the local man, because I have been with them. I, I know their problems and I'm trying to address the problem squarely. Okay. One, our major problem is uh, unemployment. 90% or 95% of our youths, both the young men and women, are unemployed. And a chunk, a large number of them, uh, have gone into all sorts of vices, like drugs and so on. Because, uh, you know, an idle mind is always a devil's sure. workshop. Mm. Uh, so, uh, during my campaigns, I told them I am not going to promise them government jobs because the jobs are not there. But we are going to create jobs for them. So that is why immediately after my elections, before I was sworn in, I built the uh, Captain Muba Industrial Village where I intend to train these youths in different skills. And uh, in six months, we are able uh, to graduate over 600 and 50 of these women and youths in different skills. We have about seven uh, departments, the ICT, the carpentry, uh, fabrication of uh, agri machineries. Uh, we also have a uh, women department where we teach them sewing, weaving, etc. And uh, we train them and empower them. Not just train them, but empower them. We give them tools to go and start their businesses. And uh, we, we are doing well. And we uh, also look at uh, another major problem that is affecting our people is water. Mm. Up till today, in this 21st century, people go to the stream uh, to get water to drink. So that is why I embarked personally, not my constituency project, but personally I uh, embarked on sinking about uh, 300 boreholes. Wow. And, uh, uh, like, that wow. is each per unit. And I have 254 units and uh, some additional ones to the district heads, to some hospitals and, uh, and uh, schools and so on. Uh, so I am on that project. Right now we have done about over 200. Uh, in our local government we have done uh, about eight wards. We have four to go, and in the other local government country, we've done about uh, six wards, and we have four to go. So the project is ongoing, and people are happy because when you have clean water, uh, you are taking care of a lot of uh, health problems, etc. And uh, we've also gone into even uh, developing some of the roads that are not accessible. Because you have villages that uh, in the rainy season, they can bring out sick people to the hospitals, they can move their uh, farm produce to the market and so on. So I've also gone into that and uh, doing some culverts and burning some rurals for them. So those are some of the uh, sacrifices uh, we are doing and uh, we are on it. This is wonderful. Like this is that's the reason why I keep running after him because I know he's done a lot. Nasa, thank you very much for what you've been doing for your people. I and my crew so much appreciate you, and I we hope uh, God keep giving you the strength. Now, with the reception right now in the country, how are you able to achieve all this? Well, as I told you, I am a, I've been a farmer and I'm also a businessman. So before contesting for this position. So the whole thing is about people. And uh, one of the things that uh, inspired me to go for this position is to do what I am doing, to give them to the people. This is what I have been doing all my life. My, my hobby is giving to the people. 
and even we out of this position that is what i've been doing and that is what i will continue to do so i don't mind using my personal resources to, to touch it. the life of the people uh 70 percent of what i'm doing uh is with my personal resources and not with the uh with the government resources because uh, since we came in uh, the first constituency project uh, we are about doing is uh, for the 2016 and which I am going to do in, uh, during the Easter and what I am doing with uh, my first constituency project and the National Assembly is to give uh, uh, agri-input to the farmers to go back to farm because the rainy season is by the corner. I want to increase the agricultural uh, production because you know we are just coming out of uh, the insurgency and so the people we have to eat food and food and food so that is what I'm doing with the first uh, constituency project. Wow, that's lovely, that's wonderful sir. Now sir, how do you relax? You go out, you, you walk, you want to make people out there smile. How do you now relax after a very stressful day? Well really, I really don't uh, I really can't say how I relax because my days are always busy and uh, when I come back home in the evening I go straight to bed and I will be in bed till like 12 p.m. before I doze up. Uh, so if I'm not doing the job, I am in bed thinking about how to do the job the next day. So that is how it is. But uh, what makes me calm and happy is when I am really helping the people that so, makes me that makes me happy so when you see them happy you are okay that's all so you don't listen to any music you don't you know maybe you don't any sports what do you do most times too no matter how you want to go back to you to your bed and think about things maybe a little bit of sports or music why are you doing those things? I have a gym in my house, but I hardly, <laughs> I hardly go to the gym. But I'm trying to. Well, you did today. I actually saw you doing that today. Yeah, I'm trying to discipline myself <laughs> so that I won't, uh, uh, I will reduce my weight so I can live longer to keep serving the people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I love that. Now you want to, you know, live longer to serve your people. Now, so as a grassroots person, which the gallery is all about, the grassroots people, what is your advice to those that see you as a leader and in one way or the other aspire to be like you someday? What are your advice to them? Well, I am always a mentor to people around me, more especially the, the young ones. And uh, what I want them to grab from me is to know that uh, whatever you want to do, you have to start small. Because the big is always in the small. So don't wait until you have, ah, I need capital, until you have big money before you can start something. You can start from the scratch. And that was how I started. My first uh, agricultural experience, the only thing I got from my grandfather was a hoe and a cutlass. And I went to the bush and I harvested some few bags of uh, corn and uh, some beans and that was what I used to start my first restaurant, uh, fast food restaurant and uh, that has how the story continued. So you don't need big money to start. Wherever you find yourself, don't complain. Just look at the opportunities around you. Nigeria is full of a, lo a lot of uh, potentials. Everywhere you move around in Nigeria, uh, potentials. Money is all over. But unfortunately, our, the attention of our youth is diverted to white collar job. The money is not in the white collar job. Essentially, where you have a society where corruption is not there. If you go in to work in government and depend only on your salary, you know that a farmer that goes to his farm and produces some rice or maize or whatever will earn more than you. So let us try to focus on different skills. Uh, and be self-employed instead of looking up to white collar jobs. So what are also your advice to the youth out there who want to one day venture into politics? 
Yeah, politics is uh, we encourage all our youths to venture into politics. We have different levels of politics because if we all venture into uh, politics, then we will have good governance. So we shouldn't just fold our arms and allow few bad ones to make the noise. We should all be part of it so that we can take our destiny into our hands and determine who becomes our leader. If we, are, we all go into it and uh, develop interest in it, then the few bad ones will not have their way. Hmm. Instead, we will always pick the best to represent us. Uh, politics is all about governance, and governance is all about service to the people, not service to yourself, but to the people. So if you, if, uh, if you put in good leaders who have conscience, I assure you that you will even be begging for people that will go in there. Because if you have good conscience, service is not uh, a child's play. It's real. That's why uh, we, we, we call our leaders servants. And the leaders are supposed to be servants who will serve their people. So uh, all our youths should develop interest in politics, make sure they get their voters' cards, make sure they participate in voting. Just participating in voting, you are already in politics because you are determining who becomes the leader. So there are different levels of politics and our youth should make sure they are part of it. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Before we call it a day, I want you to tell my viewers out there your name again and uh, tell them to keep watching the gallery. Well, I'm Yusuf Buba Yakub, popularly called uh, Yusuf Captain Buba. And I encourage all of you out there to keep watching the gallery. Thank you very much, my viewer. We have to call it today, but I still remain your host, Messi Osuya, from the gallery. Goodbye and remain blessed. This is another pathetic situation in Moson Okonla local government, Egbeda. This is Abigail from Kogi State. According to the information we gathered, Abigail and his brother Abdul were brought from Kogi State a year ago by a man who claims to be their uncle. Instead to take good care of them, he sent them out to hawk pure water on their hot sun. After selling, they give the money to a particular woman to pay for a local savings called a job as instructed by their uncle. This is the woman they give the money to each time they finish selling their pure water. The matter was getting very serious that we had to take them to the executive secretary office, Mrs. Akindele Aduni of Bemi. This is their uncle, a car washman and the wife who hawks too. This one, father and they are alive, mother and they are alive. So then they with me, we live at River State with our father, see my card, Barat ID card. So we came here in January, I, I meet with them, they are going to bring them on this February. So as I don't have anything now, my father, my, my father too don't die. So I just rent come here, as I come here, the money he did with me, I used to rent house. So I don't get one there again, so my mother and this condition. I say okay, they should go and find small money come so that we we'll use it to help ourselves. At the end, an agreement was reached that the children should not be seen anywhere again hawking. Mrs. Akindele Adoni promised to give the children admission into the public school in this area with the assurance of taking care of their uniforms and books.